as we look at First News. It's fair. It's accurate. You get the damn truth. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has met with Israeli leaders. They didn't even want him to come again. He's pushing for a ceasefire with the terrorist. He said it's time now for an agreement that would free the hostages and bring a pause to the seven months war. Israel is saying, no thanks. Sure, we'd like to have our hostages. We're not going to pause defeating the terrorist who in another year could have another attack on us and kill another 1,500 people and will continue to fight that forever. They're going to do it right this time. Lincoln's wasting his time, although they would like to see the hostages freed. In the meantime, we, the United States, we're building a pier in the Gaza Sea. Oh yeah, the U.S., we're building a pier there so we can land ships and give food to the people in Palestine who are not even seeing most of it because it's going to the Hamas fighters. That's right. We're building a pier there. We haven't built a pier in the Ukraine to help the millions of people in that war that have been displaced. Nope. We're just building the pier over there in the Gaza Sea. And in the meantime, the Iranian-backed Houthi and Hamas rebels are attacking all the ships that we are sending across the sea. That's right. There was another one attacked yesterday. A Portuguese ship hit in the Arabian Sea, raising concerns about the Hamas, who the terrorists that continue to attack the vessels bringing aid. American military ships continue to shoot at them. Nothing from Joe Biden and his concerns. He's on his way to Delaware. He left yesterday for an early weekend for his vacation home in Delaware as the country is in unrest now due to protesters, little liberal Nazi Democrats in California, Los Angeles, Columbia University, taking to the streets again, wishing death to all of the Jews in America and death to America as well. The insurrection yesterday at a building in Columbia University came to an end. Police from New York had to be called in to break that one up as they took over the building and raised the Palestinian flag. No word from the White House on this anti-Semitic behavior. The president hasn't spoken to the nation. He hasn't calmed the students. It's a huge voting block that he's concerned about, and he doesn't want to alienate them from him. In fact, yesterday, according to the Associated Press, the Biden administration is asked the Attorney General's office and the DEA to reclassify marijuana. It's a late season ploy to try to woo young election voters this coming November. AP's words, not mine. That proposal faces a potentially lengthy review process anyway. It would make marijuana research easier. It would reduce the taxes for the cannabis businesses. Even though next April, Joe Biden is going to let the tax cuts from the Trump era expire, raising your taxes anywhere from 3 to 5%, depending on what tax bracket you fall into. Even the lowest of income earners will see their taxes go up when Biden, who has publicly announced, will let the Trump tax cuts expire. Donald Trump gets a day break from his non-disclosure agreement trial. He's going to rally voters today in Wisconsin and Michigan a day after the judge, who is a Joe Biden campaign donor and donor works for the Biden administration, imposed punishment, saying he's violating his gag order. He doesn't want President Trump out there saying anything about any of these trials for Four of them going on at the same time, unprecedented in American history. No one has ever undergone four trials in different venues at the same time. He said next time he will impose incarceratory punishment, which means prison for those of you north of town. And uh, that'll be interesting to see what happens there. Drone footage obtained by AP shows Russian artillery pounding devastating cities in the Ukraine. Footage shows skeleton ghost towns. Few of the residents have been left anything to live in. They've had to evacuate massive, massive exoduses from these towns in the Ukraine. And yet, no call for aid from Antony Blinken. Where's the ceasefire? Has anybody called for a ceasefire in the Ukraine-Russia war? Mm. No. No, why? Why no ceasefire there? Hmm? Who knows what their strategy is? Workers, activists, and others in Europe and Asia are marking May Day with rallies and marches today. They're calling for better working conditions. Police had to actually use tear gas and fired rubber bullets to dispense people who were attempting to break through a barricade in defiance of a government ban.
can. That's how they handle protests in other countries. <laughs> not here. Not in our country. 55 people were hurt yesterday too seriously when a Metro Light Rail train and a University of Southern California shuttle bus collided in Los Angeles. Happened at noon yesterday near the USC campus. Two victims hospitalized, serious injuries, 16 others in fair condition. Luckily, no one, no one was hurt. The Supreme Court has refused to block a Texas law. Their law will remain requiring pornographic websites to verify the age of their users. Rejected an emergency appeal by the Free Speech Coalition. The provision of House Bill 1181 was signed into law by their governor remains in effect. Wanted to make sure nobody under age had access to these sites. And of course, the ACLU went after him, said it's a violation of free speech. Nobody's blocking a 16-year-old's ability to say what they want. That's right. That's not what they're doing. So anyway, that one was upheld. Yesterday, by now, you know that Billings police confronted a machete-wielding man. Downtown Billings threatening police refused to respond to their orders to drop his weapon and keep his hands uh, able to be viewed by police. Ended up in shooting the man, and he died on his way to the hospital yesterday. Why, you say, do they approach like this? Sword-wielding man in London killed a 14-year-old boy yesterday and hurt four others. Oh, yeah, wielding a sword, attacked members of the public on the streets of London. It was the only option for police there as well. Indonesia's Mount Rung volcano spewing more hot clouds again today after an eruption. In fact, it forced the closure of schools and airports, pelted their villages with volcanic debris. Folks, you better get those solar panels up quick (laughs) if we're going to stop these volcanoes. It's ready to blow its top. South African Aquarium is stretched beyond capacity. 500 baby sea turtles were washed up on the beaches in a powerful storm. It was rescued by members of the public. The little turtles are mostly endangered loggerheads. They'll spend a few months of their lives in newly built plastic tanks at a turtle conservation center. They have a capacity of 150 turtles. They are vulnerable to extreme weather. The storm has given conservationists a valuable insight into another increasingly common danger, and that is plastic pollution. They think that's behind the turtles being washed up on the ocean banks. On the medical front, regular mammograms to screen for breast cancer now, according to the experts, should start younger at age 40. Women ages 40 to 74 should get screened every year, according to the new research. Previously, the task force has said women could choose to start screening as young as 40 with a stronger recommendation once they hit 50. The announcement Tuesday from the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force makes an official draft recommendation published in the Journal of American Medical Association. Other medical groups include the American College of Radiology and the American Cancer Society. As death rates have fallen as treatment continues. Don't forget, those of you that want to turn into a woman, that's another thing you got to add mm-hmm. you you can't you could can just you just can't look like one and dress like one you need every, if you want to be one then you gotta be one right i mean you need to have cycles you need to go through menopause you you need to get mammogram you you want to be it then you gotta be at a hundred percent i agree not just pick the good things that you like sorry i didn't have actually had that in the story it's just something i thought of after three straight hotter than expected inflation reports, the feds are now more cautious. The big question is, they've got a policy meeting today. Will there still be rate cuts this year or possibly an increase as inflation right now continues to build? Why? The government keeps putting trillions and trillions into the economy, chasing the same amount of goods. And you want another one? Before Biden went on his long weekend to Delaware yesterday, he announced not only the marijuana rule, But he said he's going to cancel another $6 billion in student loans. And this will be for people who attended an art institute, a system for for for-profit colleges that closed campuses amid fraud. That's right. He said they were misled. And the best thing we can do is to just pick up the tab for all of them. Another 317,000 people who attended any art institute will have their loan passed on to you. It's a 
transfer. It's not a forgiveness. The bills still do. So you will pay. And once again, to find Congress appropriating billions of dollars on his own. Another election year ploy. Amazon reported strong results first quarter. They earned a 13% increase over the same period last year. Amazon earned $143.31 billion in revenue in the first three months of this year. Is that big tech? Should be. That's big tech. Only oil is referred to as big. Speaking of energy, energy and environmental ministers at the Group of Seven Nations meeting, they've all committed now to phase out coal power completely by 2035. Gives us 10 years. My power was out the day before yesterday again. <laughs> Can you imagine how much power is going to be out, folks, so we have no more coal and no more natural gas electricity anymore? Hmm? We're not going to be able to keep up. How the hell are we going to generate power at night? Uh, uh, not with solar. Not with, and wind tapers off at night. Generally, yeah. What the hell are we going to do? I don't know. Well, no coal in nine years either. G7s. Yep, they all agreed. Britain, France, Italy, Canada, all committed. No coal. They want no coal by 2030. United States and Germany, we're taking big steps towards that date. Big steps. Many car shoppers simply want a vehicle that's practical and easy to drive now. High fuel economy is increasingly a popular desire. Why? Well, obvious. Fuel prices of skyrocket. If you're looking for these qualities in your next vehicle, AP says check out the 2024 Kia Nero, the 2024 Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. The Nero recently has been redesigned. It's an SUV, distinctive styling, hybrid powertrain, probably has automatic emergency braking. All the new ones do. The Corolla Hybrid, similarly fresh budget-minded SUV loaded with appealing features. Edmunds compares them all to find out which one's better. Best if you want to check out that on your own. Starbucks was in the news. They lowered their expectations for their full year sales and profit. They had a disastrous quarter. The Seattle coffee giant said revenue January through March dropped 2%. 8.6 billion. That's big coffee. It was the first time that the company saw a drop in quarterly revenue. Starbucks said there's a mix of issues that impacted sales in the U.S. Number one, the company saw a sharper and faster decline in consumer spending than anticipated, faced rising price competition in China. But Starbucks hopes to turn it around. They got a bunch of new products coming out, like a new energy drink that will be coming to U.S. stores this summer. U.S. stocks closed out an ugly April with even more losses yesterday. The S&P 500 down 1.6%. The Dow lost a bunch yesterday. It fell 570 points as well. NASDAQ also sank yesterday. Oil prices bounced around up and down and all around. Yesterday, oil was down about 18 cents. Some of the stocks had traded heavily. Eli Lilly and company, it was up. Drug maker raised their profits forecast for the year. And uh, what else do we have? Mike Tyson's fight against Jake Paul coming up here in Texas. It's going to be at Texas Stadium where the Cowboys play. Mm -hmm. It's now officially been sanctioned as a competitive boxing match rather than an exhibition. So this is a real fight now. The rounds will be shorter, though. The gloves will be heavier. The Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation approved terms for the fight. It's July 20th. Netflix will provide the live coverage in this bout between 27-year-old Jake Paul and 57-year-old Mike Tyson, who hasn't fought since he had an exhibition against Roy Jones Jr. back in 2020. But the Department of Licensing got involved. Everything's going to be competitive. Same rules. Two-minute rounds. Eight two-minute rounds. Most of the men's pro fights are three-minute rounds. These gloves will be 14 ounces instead of the 10 ounce gloves to reduce the power of the punches that these two can inflict upon one another. The department's combative sports staff considers, among other factors, the age of the contestants, medical tests, win-loss records by knockout and technical knockout as well. Tyson was the undisputed heavyweight champ from 87 to 90, retired in 2005, 50 fights, 40 Four of them he won by knockout Mm -hmm. into the next millennium. And uh, Jake Paul is a good fight. You know, I watched an interview, though, and Jake Paul has some of the most utmost respect for Mike Tyson. 
Good. As a fighter. Mm-hmm. He said the guy was brilliant. He was he was unbeatable. Um but uh, that's going to be a huge event, mm-hmm. huge event down there. Little tip, if you get a ticket for that, I'd be in my seat right when it started. <laughs> really? <laughs> Wouldn't that suck? Uh, where were you? Well, the nachos. I just got my nachos and a beer. It's over a minute and 30 seconds, and it's over? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> in sports, I don't watch much NBA anymore, but I watched uh, I watched a couple games last night. Uh, the Sixers were facing elimination against the Knicks, and they played their butts off and beat them, as did the Milwaukee Bucks, who were on the brink of elimination and didn't have Damian Lillard or Giannis last night and just played their hearts out and just never quit going, going, and going. And I like to see that kind of hustle, but nobody likes a good hustle like they like a good brawl in baseball. Had one of those yesterday. Oh, yeah? Uh, apparently, Tampa Bay and Milwaukee were playing, and uh, Abner Uribe was pitching, and Jose Siri had hit a home run earlier, and in baseball etiquette, you don't just stand there and watch the ball go out. And he did. And so, next time he was up, little dribbler to the pitcher, takes him out at first base and they're walking by. He said something about his mom. He said something back about his mom. <laughs> and, mm. and everybody in a uniform came out and just cleared all the benches. Mm. <laughs> well, they must all speak fluid Spanish then. Must be. Because they all understood what he said. Mm-hmm. 49 today, folks. That's it. A little chilly out there. 40% chance of showers. 50 tomorrow. We'll be uh, warmer again by the weekend, so don't fret. Downtown now, it's 40. That's what's happening. Mark and Paul here together. Thanks for tuning into the cat.